ಬಿಶ್ರಾಲಿ ಸದ್ರಿ ವಯಸ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ಅಮ್ರಿ ವಾಹ್ಲು ಲುಕ್ತ ತಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲ ಸಾನಿ ಅಫ್ಕೌ ಕೌಲಿ ಔಜುಬಿಲ್ಲಾಯ್ ಮಿನ ಶೈತೋನ ರಜೀಮ್ ಬಿಸ್ಮಿಲ್ಲಾ ರಹಮಾನ ರಹೀಮ್ ಅಸ್ಸಲಾಮ್ ವಲೈಕುಮ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ದ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಜೋಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹೋಲಿ ಕುರಾನ್ ವಿತ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಅವರ್ ಇಂಟೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಕ್ಲಿಯರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅಲ್ಲಾ ಸುಬಾನ ಉತಾಲ ದಿಸ್ ಪಾರ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೂರ್ಯ ನಿಸಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಒನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಾ ಸುಬಾನ ಉತಾಲ ಸೇಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಾ ಡಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಈವಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸೆಟ್ ಓಪನ್ಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎನಿ ಒನ್ ರಾಂಗ್ಡ್ ಅಲ್ಲಾ ಸುಬಾನ ಉತಾಲ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಹೇರಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ನೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಈವಲ್ ಆರ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಬೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಗಾಸಿಪಿಂಗ್ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ ಅಕ್ಯೂಸೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಮಾಕ್ರಿ ಎಕ್ಸೆಟ್ರಾ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಬ್ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ಲಿ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಬಿನ್ ಎನ್ಕರೇಜ್ ಟು ಫೊಗೇವ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕನ್ಸೀಲ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ಹೈಡ್ ದ ಫಾಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಾ ಸುಬಾನ ಉತಾಲ ವಿಲ್ ಕನ್ಸೀಲ್ ಆರ್ ಶಾರ್ಟ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಶಾಲ್ ವರ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಟು ಒನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಡಿಬೇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಬುಕ್ ಹೇರ್ ಅಲ್ಲಾ ಸುಬಾನ ಉತಾಲ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಕ್ರೈಮ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಬೈ ಒನ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಲ್ಲಾ ಸುಬಾನ ಉತಾಲ ಕಂಡೆಮ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಸ್ಟಬನ್ ಡಿಮಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಎವಿಡೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಅಲ್ಲಾ ಸುಬಾನ ಉತಾಲ ಸೇಸ್ ದ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಬುಕ್ ಆಸ್ಕ್ ಯೂ ಟು ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಡೌನ್ ಟು ದೆಮ್ ಅ ಬುಕ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ದ ಹೆವನ್ಸ್ but they asked of musa even greater than that and said make us see allah with our own eyes then allah subhanahu wa taala tells us that they worship the cow even after seeing clear signs from allah subhanahu wa taala they had been asked to worship allah subhanahu wa taala on the sabbath meaning the day of saturday but they disobeyed those commands as well they killed many prophets of allah slandered hazrat maryam alay salam and then boasted that they had killed hazrat isa alay salam we have further told that they take riba or interest and took away the wealth of the people unjustly but then allah subhanahu wa taala gives us some positive news as well we are told in the next verse that even among such evil people there were a few good men so we should never give up hope and keep calling people towards islam verse 171 onwards is a confrontation with the christians firstly they have been told not to do hulu what's hulu it means exceeding the limits or going into extremes the christians did gulu in the case of hazrat isa alaihi salam and they elevated him from the rank of prophethood to being a god we have to know that we should practice our religion as it was brought to us by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who are we to alter the religion of allah subhanahu wa taala because islam is perfect and rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam showed us how to practice it perfectly it should not make any difference to us whether other cultures or people or science approve of it or not we have to be confident in our faith verse 174 is an invitation to all mankind to believe in the book which has come as a clear light from allah subhanahu wa taala it leads to the straight path of allah which in turn leads to the gardens of paradise surah maida it was revealed in madina soon after the treaty of hudaybiyah Surah Al-Maidah starts with a clear command from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala to all believers that they should fulfill any contract that they make whether it's with Allah or with other people. Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says in verse 2, "O oh, you who have believed, do not violate the Sha'ir Allah." What are the Sha'ir Allah? Sha'ir means signs or symbols. For example, official flags, uniforms of the armed forces, notes, stamps are all symbols used by governments so that everyone treats them with respect. So Sha'ir Allah here means all those religious places or symbols which are used exclusively to show devotion to Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. For example, Kaaba, Hijab, Hajj, Ihram, the day of Friday, Azan, etc. It is a requirement for Muslims to show respect to these signs. Next, the commandments about halal and haram eatables are given. This passage starts with verse 2 where we are given the rules for hunting and we are told that it's forbidden to seek knowledge about our faiths by divining arrows. Meaning seeking knowledge either about our future or about matters beyond human perception. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what our future holds and he will choose what's best for us. Verse number 3 also contains the part about which it said that this was the last verse revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam at the time of the farewell pilgrimage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, "This day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor upon you and have approved for you Islam as religion." 
what does it mean that islam has been perfected it means that islam is a complete way of life no additions to it are required this religion is perfect with no shortcomings this same verse is also a clear indication that rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the final prophet if islam is now complete with no room for change then no purpose remains for sending another prophet right in verse number 6 method of doing wuzu tayammum and ghusl have been given Verse number 8 reminds us that our obligation towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also includes that we deal with all people with justice and tolerance. In verse 12 to 14, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the covenant which Allah took from Bani Israel and the Christians and how both parties violated the contract. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Surely Allah took a covenant with the children of Israel and we raised up from them 12 of their leaders. And Allah said, Behold, I am with you. If you establish prayer and pay zakah and believe in my prophets and help them and lend Allah a good loan I will certainly remove from you your evil deeds and will surely cause you to enter gardens beneath which rivers flow whoever of you disbelieves thereafter has indeed gone astray from the straight path are these not the same demands that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes from us how many from amongst us are following all these demands do we establish prayer and pay zakah do we fulfill our duty to to spread the message of Islam which is the only way to help the prophet verse 20 to 26 is the incident which happened at the time of Hazrat Musa alaihi salam Musa alaihi salam after reminding the Bani Israel of the many favors that were granted to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them to enter the holy land but they refused why because they had heard that the people who lived there were very strong only two true believers were willing to put their trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fight for the sake of Allah the rest of them refused and said o oh Musa we will not enter it ever as long as they are within it so go you and your lord and fight indeed we are remaining right here as a result allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them and said then this land is forbidden to them for 40 years during which they will wander through the land compare this to the response given by the ansar during the battle of badr when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked them for their advice about fighting the mighty army of the quraish the ansar said we will never say as the children of israel said to musa alaihi salam rather march on and we will be with you we should also check ourselves do we only follow the commands of allah subhanahu wa taala in tough situations or do we take the easy way out next the story of the two children of hazrat adam alaihi salam is told in verses 27 to 31 both brothers offered a sacrifice for allah subhanahu wa taala but only one of them got his sacrifice accepted as his intention was pure this led to one brother being jealous of the other he was so envious that he murdered his own brother murder is such a big thing that in the very next ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that whoever takes a life it will be as if they killed all of humanity whoever saves a life it will be as if they saved all of humanity in verse 33 Muslims have been ordered to give severe punishment to the individuals who try to cause corruption and chaos in the land. Then we are told in verse 38 the punishment for stealing. The punishment is to cut off a hand on the first offense. Now these punishment might seem harsh to us and the enemies of Islam label them as barbaric. But what they don't tell you is that this punishment is not applicable to the theft of food items or if it's something of little value. We have to realize that Islamic punishments call dud crimes have a purpose and it is to prevent crime from being committed in the first place in the next few verses allah subhanahu wa taala tells us that those who do not judge according to the law revealed by allah subhanahu wa taala are disbelievers kafirun next verse says that such people are oppressors zalimun and the next verse again says that such people are wicked fasikun because these people instead of listening to allah subhanahu wa taala refer to opinions desires customs that people themselves invented how can the creation make better rules than the one who created them in the first place verse number 54 mentions the qualities of people who love allah subhanahu wa taala and allah subhanahu wa taala loves them all of us want to be such people right what are their qualities they are humble towards believers they are firm against the disbelievers they strive in the cause of allah and do not fear the blame of the critic they are the ones who establish prayers and pay zakah 
they are the ones who bow down before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and they take Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger and those who believe as their friends. In verse number 57, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits Muslims with making friendship with people who make fun of their religion. In verse 64, we are given an example of such people as well. The Jews, when they were asked to do charity for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they implied that God was poor and that's why he needed our charity. Next, in verses 78 and 79, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about the Bani Israel who were cursed by Hazrat Dawood and Hazrat Isa They were the ones who constantly overstepped the limits and did not stop each other from committing evil. The corruption of any nation begins with that of a few individuals. Mostly, it's the pressure of public opinion which keeps those individuals in check and prevents the nation as a whole from becoming corrupt. When someone has strong iman, he or she will neither do any wrong act themselves nor allow others to do it. This brings us to the end of the sixth para and to our question for today. And the question is, what are the Shair Allah? And do I honor and respect them? Inshallah, we will meet again tomorrow with the next para. Allah Hafiz.